Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Texas Hill Country Fishing Report with Greg Wielander of Upstream on the Fly. How are you doing, Greg? Well, Marvin, I'm, I'm not too bad. I'm, I'm a little wore out. I've, I've had a busy last, you know, uh, two weeks, so uh, starting to get warm down here. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you've been the road warrior. It sounds like you probably need to go to the Jiffy Lube and get an oil change, given all the driving you've been doing. Where have you been? Well, Marvin, you know, I've, I've been up in the uh, North Texas area, I've got family up there and uh, also up there, do, you know, uh, on business. Um, and I was up there in the Dallas Fort Worth area for the uh, for the club presentations. Uh, both Dallas and Fort Worth had me as their uh, speaker for the Monday club meeting in Dallas. And then yesterday, Tuesday was the Fort Worth one. So I got to experience a Zoom meeting, okay? So they did their meetings this year via Zoom. Very neat, and I hear you were able to sneak in some fishing, too. I, I, I was. So I had spent about 13 years up there. That was probably about 10 years ago. Um, so I'm very familiar with all the different rivers and the lakes, and I've got a lot of friends, and I've got a lot of new friends, you know, a lot of new folks that I know just – through the industry and, and, and Instagram and such. And uh, I spent a day over on uh, Lake Ray Roberts uh, with uh, a young guy, Dallas Fort Worth fly fishing, I believe is his name there on the gram and uh, took me out. We went and did some carp fishing. So they had done a lot of rain up there about a week ago and all the rivers were running high and, and the lakes were, were above full you know, a lot of the lakes, the water was in the parking lot on some of these lakes and they were closed and other lakes, even though they were, were high, um, they were still open, but we did some stuff on foot. We walked a lot of flooded vegetation. Um, and you know, cart fishing is, is its own challenge, but I've got to say the first time in my life, I would cast a fly or, or, or drop a fly, um, because we were in a lot of thick cover it would eat 100%. I, I got an eat of every carp I put a fly in front of. However, trying to land a carp when you have bushes that look like mangrove trees, you know, you had trees, you had grass, you had about everything possible for a carp to wrap you up and typically did and, and broke us off. But, um, but yeah, Danny Scarlesboro is his name and, uh, he's got a pretty neat thing going and, uh, he's a very passionate angler. Um, so then yesterday, the uh, one of the guys from the Fort Worth Club, uh, Glenn, was responsible for speakers. So he said, Greg, I should sure like to take you fishing when you're up here. So I asked him where he lived, over there in the Colleyville Grapevine area. I said, do you ever fish Lake Grapevine? He said, I've got a bass boat. You bet. I fish it two or three times a week. I said, well, I, sp- I spent you know close to 13 years fishing that lake. I said, I'd love to come back and, and go fish that because it's been over 10 years since I fished it. So we, uh, we got the fly rods rigged up, got on his bass boat. It was, uh, it was a fairly warm day, not, you know, 90, 91, which isn't bad at this time of year. The lake was high. That was probably the down downfall. It was, they've been dumping a lot of water from, uh, I think it was up about four feet and it's probably dropping about a foot a week. And bass don't like quickly rising or, or falling more so um, water on, on lakes. But we found some bass. We found some largemouth, and uh, we found some uh, spotted bass or, or the Kentucky bass, which is what it's referred to a lot. And uh, I'm going to post a picture um, this week on my personal Instagram account of that spotted bass because when you look at it, it looks like a Guadalupe bass. Characteristics are, are, are very similar, um, but it's not a Guadalupe bass. But it has every it has a genetic makeup. I mean, it it smokes a topwater fly. It 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 jumps out of the water, um, and doesn't give up until you finally get it to hand. So, Marvin, I had a I had a good time reliving a lot of memories of fishing up there, and, um, and now I'm back back in the hill country. I, I, I arrived at my house last night at 12.30 a.m., so I was I'm a little wore out. <laughs> well, well, there you go, and, you know, I checked your weather before we hopped on, and it looks like um, it's going to be pretty warm in your neck of the woods for the next week to 10 days, and not a lot of chances for rain either. How, what's it looking like on the fishing front? Well, 
Um, you know, over the last two weeks, we've gotten about two and a half inches of rain. So uh, the rivers are healthy. Um, the lights are, are all in good shape. The, um, the air temperatures are going to start to warm up. I've, I've noticed um, currently it's like in the low 90s. And I think by Tuesday of next week, we're going to hit 100. Um, I do have a guide trip coming up this weekend. I've got, I've got some, uh, some work ahead of me here in the next couple of days to go dial in some fish. Um, I don't think it's going to be a challenge. Um, and, you know, I, I, I hate to see a hundred degrees show up on a, uh, weather forecast, but it's, it's not a seven day block of hundred degrees. So hopefully, hopefully we're, we're still a couple of weeks or three weeks away from, the non uh the non 90 degree days when when you hope it's in the 90s instead of the 100 so time will tell um you know lano river right now i've uh i've heard from some of my folks that i know um it's been fishing pretty well it's actually um might not be a lot of fish but there's there's been a lot of nice guadalupes and, and sunfish being caught the the flow right now is around 194 um in the town of lano but out in mason it's it's down about 102. So for me to be able to do a float trip in Mason, it's going to have to be 120. So um, it's starting to come into its summertime pattern, which isn't a bad thing. You know, it's, it's, it's a great top water and streamers in the, in the summertime. And when it is approaching the century mark, it's pretty refreshing to stand in the water and uh, actually be in the water. Um, so that's generally where you'll find me as we start to warm up. Very good. And well, listen, folks, we love questions on the Articulate Fly. If you'll send us the questions on the Articulate Fly Facebook page, um, if we use your question, I'll send you some Articulate Fly swag, and you're going to get it into a drawing at the end of the season for a bunch of really cool stuff that Greg's going to put together from the various uh, manufacturers that he reps. So that ought to be really cool. And before I let you uh, get some much needed rest, uh, why don't you let folks know where they can find you, Greg, so they can book you and fish with you? Okay, three places. My website, upstreamonthefly.com. Find me over at Instagram uh, under Upstream on the Fly, and it'll have Greg Wielander under, under the name there. And then over on Facebook, Upstream on the Fly as well. Well, folks, you owe it to yourself to get out there and fish while it's still Texas cool and not consistently 100 degrees. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Greg. Thanks, Marvin. Thanks, Marvin.